In August 2014, the State Auditor of Mississippi received the David M. Walker an Excellent in Government Performance and Accountability Award, which is a national award that is presented once every two years to three auditors from the public sector of accountability community who represent federal, state, and local government. He was previ previously honored with the National State Auditors Association's National Excellence and Accountability, Accountability Award for his work on ARRA accountability and oversight in June 2012. In 2009 and again in 2013, the Department of Defense honored him with a Patriot Award from its Mississippi Committee on Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve in recognition of his extraordinary support of its employees who serve in the Mississippi National Guard and Reserve. Our state auditor is a man focused on faith and family, and from my experience, he's a man that, he's been like family to me. From Boy Scouts, to teaching Sunday school, to coaching sports, to making breakfast, to serving as chaplain in the U.S. Air Guard, our state auditor does many things for his community, state, and nation. And so I would like to welcome the state auditor of Mississippi, Mr. Stacy Pickering. Good evening, Boys State. How are you guys doing? Anybody tired? Get over it. Week's not over yet. I know you guys are having a great time. You've had a lot of great speakers. Is the governor here today? Where's Gregory? Where'd Gregory go? Austin, where are you? Snuck out already. This is what the leaders do when y'all have speakers. They go out in the hallway and sleep. Now he put up, he was on Instagram and Facebook with Governor Bryan here today. I know you guys have had some great speakers in, shared with you a lot about what they do. You've heard a little bit about what I do at the State Auditor's Office. We've got over 100 auditors, CPAs, accountants, but the coolest thing, I've got this group of law enforcement guys, badges, guns, lawyers, CPAs, and what they do is go after folks who misspend our tax dollars. And because of that, we've received multiple national awards. We've been recognized for what we do as a small state in Mississippi when we get compared to Texas, California, Pennsylvania, New York, Florida, Mississippi is the role model. Matter of fact, Gene Dodaro, the Comptroller General of the United States, in federal testimony before the U.S. Senate, said that Mississippi is the best role model for other states to follow when it comes to transparency and accountability. That's the reputation your state in Mississippi has, and we should never, ever bow our head or hold our head down when it's compared to any other state in this nation. We not only can, but we do succeed day in and day out, contrary to what the national media tries to tell us. Now, you guys are going to learn a lot this week about politics and all that. You don't need to hear that from me, except that it's one of the greatest honors and privileges you can be involved in, and not just waiting now or four years from now, but right now at your age and where you are in life, be involved in campaigns, be involved in politics locally, state, and nationally. Support the candidate you guys believe in. Be involved in that process. Make a difference and make an impact. Because that's what Boy State is helping you guys learn how to do. From the campaigns y'all been running this week already, you're caucusing, you're putting together your conventions and your parties and your platforms, getting ready to govern Boy State and take it over tonight, tomorrow. You will be in charge as far as the direction and the success of this year's Boy State. Tonight, though, I want to challenge you guys and not talk so much about politics, not talk so much about the accolades of the auditor's office and what's happened for the last two terms and now going into the third term and what our staff has done, because it's not me, Stacy Pickering, it's Sam Atkinson, it's Pat Dindy, it's David Huggins, and everybody else, all 100 plus employees who work for you, the taxpayers of the state of Mississippi. But tonight, I want to challenge you guys on three things. But I want to start off with the biggest issue, think in your mind, who is your mentors? Who are people that you look up to in life? It could be your father, be your uncle, be your preacher. It could be the governor. It could be a president. It could be somebody you know personally and intimately, but it can also be somebody that lived 
a hundred years ago that you read and you study about how did George Washington live his life. Tonight I'm going to give you three of my mentors. And I want to share with you a quote from each and every one of them and sort of set up for you guys what this week is about. The first person I want to share with you is Rear Admiral William McRaven. He's now retired from the U.S. Navy. His last job was commander of the U.S. Special Forces. So this guy was the admiral that was in charge of the SEALs, Marine Recon, the Green Berets, and the PJs. That's the Air Force guys. They don't go in secret. They go in to break stuff to get the downed pilots out. And so you've got this guy in charge of all the special ops that we have in the U.S. military. And about three to four years ago, he spoke at the graduation of the University of Texas. And let me give you the first piece of advice he gave those graduates. You want to change the world? Do y'all want to change the world? Make your bed. Make your bed. That was his advice to the graduates of the University of Texas. Make your bed. How many of you made your bed this morning? Don't lie to me. Now look at that, that's sad. That is sad. Let me tell you why he said make your bed. He said, because what happens, you start your day with an accomplishment. You have now accomplished something. You have got order, you have got discipline in your life, and one success sets you up for another success, and another success, and another success, and as you go throughout the day, you've already started your day with success. If you want to change the world, Admiral McRaven said, make your bed. The military teaches you to do it, and the reason why is discipline, but the real reason is so that you start your day off with success and order and structure so that you can accomplish things throughout the day. You guys are going into your senior year. All right? Big men on campus. Start looking at colleges, GPAs. We're looking at test scores. We're looking at our athletics and how we're going to accomplish so that we can go and do great things for the next 10 years. I hope it doesn't take you all that long to graduate. Somebody had to wake up and think about that one for a second. But think about it. If you're worried about getting something accomplished every day as a senior in high school, what is the first thing you accomplish in the morning? Bingo, make your bed. It gets you accomplishing items. It gets you accomplishing things. And Admiral McRaven said, if you want to be a success, if you want to change the world, and you want to accomplish something great, make your bed first and foremost. But this is the other kicker. Has anybody in this room ever had a bad day? Besides me? Yeah, we all are going to have a bad day, and some days you're going to have a day that doesn't feel like you accomplished anything. If anything, it may feel like you failed. But Admiral McRaven said, even those bad days, when you show up and walk back into your bedroom, the last thing you see was the first thing you did. And it's a success. And you had an accomplishment. And when you lay your head down that pillow at night, you know you accomplished something. It may be mundane, it may be minute, but you started your day with an accomplishment and you ended your day with that accomplishment. Even on bad days, you still get to focus on something you accomplished. Make your bed. So Admiral McRaven's a great hero of mine. If you want to watch his YouTube speech, let him be a mentor of yours. Go watch, just type in, make your bed speech. Guess what comes up on YouTube? McRaven. Admiral McRaven comes up and watch the speech. He's sharp, he's tough, he's a Navy SEAL, he's in dress whites, he's at the commencement, and he's got like 12 points that you can do to change the world. That's just his first one. Let me share with you guys another mentor I have in life. Professor Dr. Randy Posh. Has anybody heard of Randy Posh? What do you know about him? All right, what about his book? It was not ABCs, was it? Oh, test time. See, I'm stalling, giving him a chance to think and get his thoughts put together. That's how good of a guy I am. I'm helping him out real quick. And now I'm coming back to you, back on the test. Perfect. Absolutely right. If y'all couldn't hear that, give him a round of applause. All right, commercial break, chase a rabbit real quick. 
When you read and when you're well read and you keep up with current events and things like that, guess what? You just showed yourself off to be a stud right there, okay? Plain and simple. You sit there, you said, you know what? I know current events. I know this happened. I know this guy's name. Bop, bop, bop. How many of us can do that on different topics around the world? Keep yourself up. So that's my little commercial break, a little land yap for you. Randy Posh, he was a professor at Carnegie Mellon, got diagnosed with prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer actually, pancreatic cancer. He's got three to six months of good life left before he dies. And they had a tradition called the last lecture. And they asked professors, if you had one lecture left to give about how to live your life and be a success, what would you say? And they had had some great scholars and professors get up and give that speech, but Randy Posh was the first one that ever meant it because this was truly his last lecture. And he gave a great lecture. It was a YouTube success. He had been a consultant. He was a computer engineer and specialized in computer-human interactivity. So Disney would hire him to help their Imagineers with their theme parks and everything else in life. The guy was brilliant. But he gives this great speech. It's all over YouTube. And they come back and say, you know what? We need to put this in a book. People need to read this. People need to understand it. And one of the greatest quotes from his book and from his speech, when I watched the speech several years ago, I think he died in 2012, Dr. Posh's the best speech was, experience is what you get when you don't get what you wanted. Why don't you repeat that? Experience is what you get when you don't get what you wanted. Translation, just like Admiral McRaven was talking about, if you have a bad day and you don't accomplish anything, maybe you failed, maybe you made a mistake, but you still come in in your face with that bed that's been made, and you say, you know what, at least I accomplished something this morning. Dr. Posh comes in and says, life experiences are what happens when you don't accomplish what you wanted. Every single one of you guys in this room have already in your life had days that you failed. Maybe it was a class, or maybe it was a grade, maybe it was a relationship, maybe it was a job, maybe it was a friendship, sports, baseball players, raise your hand. Keep your hand up if you struck out. Make sure you got yours up, okay? Don't give him a hard time. Every other hand up in here and play baseball struck out. If you play baseball, you are going to strike out. Y'all know who had the best or the most strikeouts in Major League Baseball, but yet the most home runs? Babe Ruth. You can't succeed if you don't fail. You cannot succeed if you don't fail because you've got to try, and sometimes you can't win every single time. And one of the best life lessons you can learn is what I learned from Randy Pausch is the fact that whenever he gave that speech, the last lecture was to realize sometimes I've got to try and I will not succeed. And when I don't succeed, I have to get up, dust myself off, and learn from that experience. One of the questions along that line when I learned that lesson, I asked Robert Grady, I asked Harrison, John Thomas, even Katie Beth, my daughter. I asked them the question after a ball game or after an activity, what was the best thing you did tonight that you can do again? Even this year as a senior, Robert Grady was like short in my stance, changed my bat. My bat and average went, what was it? I'm going to brag on you for a second because I'm your dad. 450? 438. That ain't bad. Wouldn't have happened, though, if he hadn't struck out a lot and realized, you know what, i got to shorten my stance, i got to change my bat. And all of a sudden, his bat never He started hitting that ball. It started actually going outside that infield, right? But he became a success because he failed and he learned from his experiences. He said, what was the best thing I did? I need to do it again. But the second question I asked them, just like Randy Pausch said, learn from your experiences. What is the one thing you need to change that you need to do different and don't do again? Part of learning and succeeding in life, if you want to change the world, if you guys want to leave Boys State and y'all want to be the next great leaders of Mississippi, the great le next great leaders of the United States, what is the one thing that you're really doing well and can you keep doing it? And what is the one thing you need to change and do differently? See, experience is what you get and what you learn from when you don't get what you wanted. And when you fail in life, you make a mistake, you come up short, 
That's the moment that you need to say, what can I do differently? What did I do that was right that I can keep doing? So Admiral McRaven, Randy Pausch, Dr. Pausch. So let me share with you guys one of my third mentors in life. And this guy's been dead for a long time. His name is Alexis de Tocqueville. Alexis de Tocqueville, some of you may already be familiar with his story. 1820s, he leaves France and comes to the United States to learn how our government succeeded. This is why it's important. Because see, we had a revolution, and all of a sudden people wanted to move here, grow here, bring their businesses here, and we had this economy that was exploding, and opportunities that were exploding. But he was in France, and they had a revolution, and what happened in France? They had another revolution. Then they had another revolution. Then they had these nights of terror, and terrorism was invented in France in order to make everybody behave and do what the government wanted them to do. And one more revolution after one more revolution, and their economy was stagnant. People were leaving, and a bunch of businessmen said, we got to figure out how they're doing things differently. And they sent him to the U.S., and he learned, he studied our government, our businesses, our courthouses, our jails. He was looking at our universities, our schools. And finally, one day in upstate New York, he realized when the bells of the church were ringing, he had never been to a church in the United States. That afternoon, he returned to his hotel room and wrote in his journal, I now know why America is great. America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great for fiery righteousness is preached from her pulpits. You see, Alexis de Tocqueville, a foreigner, a Frenchman, had to come over here to realize the fundamental truth that we are a moral, right, and just people. We are good people. And that's what makes America great and different than any other nation in the world. We are founded upon religious freedom and liberty that allows us to worship, to understand who we understand God to be, but we do it with a common purpose, a common identity. But see, that's maybe Alexis de Tocqueville's most famous quote, but let me share with you my favorite quote but I think you guys need to really put in your heart and your mind and dwell on. Alexis de Tocqueville said that liberty, freedom, is only possible with morality. And morality is only possible with faith. Liberty is only possible with morality, and morality is only possible with faith. Now, what I have shared with you guys already is the fact that you need to start with accomplishments and order and discipline in your life if you want to change the world and you want to accomplish something great. The second thing I shared with you guys is that if you want to change the world, you want to accomplish something great in your life, great for the state of Mississippi, then be willing to fail and learn from your mistakes, learn from your experiences, and keep going and keep trying. But the third thing is, I want to challenge you guys from the words of Alexis de Tocqueville, know what you believe and why you believe it. Know what you believe. You're not going to see things the same way that I do or the same way Governor Bryant does or anybody else, but I need you to understand who God is in your life. How is your faith lived out and how does it govern your principles, your character, who you are? You see, without principles, you cannot have character. And there are absolutes in this world. There are some people that would have you believe there are no absolutes, that everything is relative. I will tell you the same thing Alexis de Tocqueville will, but I will tell you like somebody from South Mississippi. Hogwash. There are absolute principles of this world. You don't believe it? Go out here, crawl up on the planter, and jump off and do me a swan dive in the parking lot. Don't really, but you get the idea. Gravity is absolute. Gravity is a law. It is going to happen whether you believe you can fly or not. There are fundamental principles in this world. You need to know what you believe. Because what makes America great is the fact that every American that has gone before you, every great American, every American that has sought to change his community, his state, and this nation, has first started off with small successes. They haven't done great things. They simply made their bed. 
They learn from their mistakes. They also learn from their successes so they can do it again and keep doing it again. The fact that you guys took a week off from your summer to come here, not just to have fun, not just to yell for Steve Guyton, but yet you came here to learn and be a part of something bigger than yourself. Keep doing this kind of thing in your life. And when you do make a mistake, learn from it and don't do it again. It's that simple. But the biggest issue is if you want to be great, then you have to be good. And you, to be good, you have to be moral. And to be moral, you have to have faith. You have to know what your principles, your rules, your laws, the absolute of life is. And when you do those simple things and you follow your own mentors and learn from your own mentors like I shared with you these three, and I can share with you a dozen more individuals who I read, I learn, I reread, I study, because they live great lives, and I want them to influence how I live my life. Three great individuals tonight I hope I've introduced you guys to that y'all study some more. Learn from. How do they live their life? And how are you going to live your life? Thank y'all for letting me come and share with you a little bit this evening. I've been getting to do this for off and on for 10 years and more than 10 years, and this is a highlight of my year getting to come and spend with Boys State and visit. I'm going to take about two or three questions real quick. I'm between you and dinner, and I'm not going to be crazy enough to stand here too long, but I do want to open up any questions about the auditor's office, about serving in the military. You've been with the American Legion. Let me tell you, that's one of the greatest privileges I have to do is put on our nation's uniform and serve our men and women that serve in the Air Force. I get to work alongside some good Navy and Marine and Army guys as well. And I was out in Colorado Springs this past week with uh, all the command chaplains. So, got one right here. Uh, hello, my name is Grayson Wolf. I attend Northwest Rankin High School. I had a question. Uh, you said you had five mentors. Could you tell me the other two? Well, more than five. There's, I've got a dozen or other individuals, individuals I study, uh, one of which would be Eric Greitman. He's a relatively new guy I've started following. He actually ran for governor, did not win. This is one of those lessons of learning from experiences. He was a Navy SEAL, but before that he was a Rhodes Scholar out of Duke. Went to Oxford and wanted to change the world and realized to change the world you've got to have security. You can't have a refugee crisis and get food, blankets, clothing, and shelter to these poor refugees. And at that time it was the battle between the Hootsies and the Tootsies. Some of the older guys in here remember that over in Africa. He said, what is the greatest security organization in the world? It was the US military. He became a SEAL, served five different tours. But Eric Greitens talks about it was the education of a humanitarian and how we have to have compassion, but also have the making of a warrior, to have strength and have a strong ethos of principles of what's right and wrong. So Eric Greitens is a great new guy uh, to study and learn from. Uh, John Adams is another one. Thomas Jefferson, our founding fathers. George Washington is one of my personal favorites. I love it. I was at Mount Vernon just a month or so ago. Uh, his, his home place in Virginia, learning his principles because he did so much so well. He had struggles, he had problems, but he overcame a lot of those to be the leader of our country. Uh, first in our hearts, first in war, first in peace, first in the hearts of his countrymen. What better thing can someone actually say about you? Thank you. <laughs> Got somebody in the back? I'm coming right back here. Hi, how you doing? My name is Shamar Davis. Spectacular. Davis. How are you doing this evening? All right. My name is Shamar Davis, and I attend Amanda Ilza High School in Greenwood, Mississippi. And I have just kept hearing you constantly repeat yourself about the bit of life. Like, I wanted to ask you, what was your bit that you committed to to keep you motivated? Uh, what, what was the biggest thing I'm committed to? Yeah, like your bit you were saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Bed. First thing in the world, my wife is right there, the lady in red. Isn't she pretty? Yeah. All right. You can ask Miss Whitney. Miss Whitney, first thing we do in the morning, we get up, we make the bed. Okay? I live, try to live by that. The bed gets made and you move forward. We make breakfast in the morning. Now, this is one of those things. How many of you guys wind up with a Pop Tart or a bowl of cereal for breakfast? Do better than that. Your brain needs protein. You need eggs. You need bacon. You need egg, sausage. Eat food like a man. Y'all watch Ghostbusters? 
Stay puff marshmallow man's made of sugar, okay? Bow up like John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, or whoever else you want to look up to. Eat some protein, be a man, all right? So we eat a breakfast every morning. <laughs> Little land yep, I'll wrap up on that one. Be a man in everything that you do, okay? And don't be apologetic for it. That's part of the problem in the world today. We try to tell men they're not men, boys are not boys. Be a man, stand up, live like a man. That means a lot of different things to a lot of different people and who your role models are, but you figure out what that means for you, and that's how you live your life. My father was a role model for me. He's one of my mentors. I try to live like my father, my grandfather, my uncle, because they showed me how to be a father, how to be a husband, how to be a neighbor, how to be a friend. Those are the things you need to learn how to do. Hey, you guys, this is a great question. You're going to make me think. All right, he asked the, Warren asked the question, has there ever been a decision since I've been in government, I served in the state senate, I have served as state auditor now in my third term, has there ever been a decision I regretted in politics? I guess you talk about, not off the top of my head, I can't think, I'm sure if I took some time to think of one, it's a great question. I'm sure there are times I wish I had done things a little differently, possibly, but um, I know one of the things, and we get a lot of press when we arrest somebody, and there's been a time or two that we probably could have done that a little quieter, a little easier, and that's one thing hopefully over the time I've learned is you don't have to be so heavy-handed in life, whether as a father, whether as the state auditor, whether as a senator. That's part of the problem in politics today. It's Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, this 24-hour news cycle. They only want people to sit and yell at each other. You talk over each other, not listen to each other. That's part of the problem is Democrats and Republicans, independents, black, white, north, south, east, west, Hispanic, Asian, whatever, how you want to break us up, we never listen to one another. So we've got to learn to listen. So let me share with you an example along the, I guess, one of those life lessons. I used to be very staunch on immigration. They came to the country illegal, they ought to be loaded up and shipped out. It sounded good, didn't it? This is before I was really in politics. The problem was I live in Laurel where we had the largest raid of illegal workers in the nation's history at my former employer, Howard Industries. And I watched families hide for days and days on end. And I came to realize, I mean, we literally had mothers left their children at school because they knew that our children would have a better opportunity than they had to go back to Mexico or Guatemala or Honduras, wherever they came from. We scared and terrified families. The lesson I learned that month, we as Americans are better than that. The lesson I learned is we have to respect the law and we have laws for a reason. And let me tell you, I am not for illegal immigration at all. But we can deal with the individuals who've broken the law that are here and those children and grandchildren in some cases more humanely than how we dealt with them that day. There's a better way to do it. And just so that nobody misquotes me, the first thing you got to do is close that dang border down there. I flew out on a turkey hunt with some friends. We got in the Suburban, drove out to a ranch, ate lunch, put on our camo, went out. I killed a nice Rio Grande, my first one I'd ever killed in southwest Texas. We're 70 miles north of the border. I'm hanging out waiting for the truck driver to come back and pick me up at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. And I look through the woods, and there I see 30 individuals, men, hunched over with bells of marijuana on their back that have crossed the border and are sneaking into our country. Now, if this redneck from Jones County, Mississippi, can fly to Texas and catch them crossing the border, what the heck is our federal government doing? My only comment, if anybody's videotaping this, is tell our president and our congressmen and senators, do your job, secure this country, secure the borders. That's not Republican, that's not Democrat, that's common sense. So that's my two bits on that front. Guys, it's been great to be with you. Thank y'all. Hope y'all have a great time here at Ole Miss.
And y'all make sure you get to know your American Legion. These are the guys that make it happen. Y'all give them a round of applause. On behalf of the candidates for state auditor, we present this mug with you and for your thanks and support of us.